How do we listen to our body when it speaks memory? Each body is amazing, valid, and wonderful as it is. Our bodies are with us for the whole journey. Yet, for some reason, we often ignore the bold wisdom that is our body's memories. We often act as though our bodies are only something to respond to in a reactive way. You smash your elbow, you twist your knee, you go see a doctor. And please, do that if you need to. But in this time together today, I want to invite you into reflecting on your body's memories. To consider the other ways that your body might be speaking to you about your past. According to the work of Dr. Peter Levine and many other experts in the body listening approach, also referred to as the somatic experience, our bodies are sometimes attempting to tell us about our past. Sometimes it might do this by sudden unexplained tension, your shoulders kind of eating your head, anxiety, or sometimes even the simple migraines we experience. Other times our bodies are telling us things because it's attempting to help us. We might have a body response to something that is right in front of us in the moment, and our body thinks it knows how to help, like a fight or flight response. And sometimes that response from the memory, it might be helpful, and other times that response is not serving us. Many times we might know what started that body's response, but so many times, sadly, we're never going to get to know. However, experts seem to agree that you don't always need to know to heal from it. That moment our body is remembering, it's just maybe sometimes about an invitation to start listening. So to help you look and think about this more, I'm going to invite you into a short reading from the book, Waking the Tiger, Healing Trauma from Dr. Peter Levine, who is a leading expert on trauma therapy and the body healing experience of somatic healing. Rhythm. All God's children got it. You cannot push the river. Sensations occur in infinite variety. This is one of the reasons that simple awareness is so important. Receptivity will help you notice the nuances in your sensations much more easily. In the land of physiology, subtle sensations and rhythms are just as important as blatant and obvious ones. The characteristic of the felt sense that I'd like to mention has to do with the importance of rhythm. Physiological phenomena occur in cycles. These biological rhythms are fundamentally important in the transformation of traumas. It may be difficult at first to have the patients to allow them to come into consciousness. Their pace is much slower than the pace at which most of us live our lives. This is the one of the reasons that trauma develops in the first place. We don't give our natural biological rhythms the time they need to reach completion. In most cases, the cycles I'm talking about will run their course in a few minutes at most. But those few minutes are essential. The primary place you will notice these rhythms is the ebb and flow of your sensations. A sensation will transform into something else, another sensation, an image, maybe a feeling. And as you notice all its characteristics, these rhythms Become attuned to them. Honor them. This is part of the process. How do we listen to our body as a healer? Results from many, many, many different studies, including those, surprisingly, from different areas of professional backgrounds, continue to show us that our bodies want us to listen. Our bodies, as they are, keep working every single moment to help us stay alive and to help us heal. The body knows it is with us for this unfolding journey for the entirety of it. 
And in many ways, it will offer some of the most unconditional love you will ever have the chance to experience. I think the problem often comes in when we and our bodies are not communicating very well. What I mean is the idea that our body responds in a way that it thinks is helpful and maybe we're not understanding. So the response is not in fact helpful at all. <laughs> this range can be just as unique and varied as each of our amazing bodies are, which is why listening and knowing how we respond is such a good start to this. If you're speaking a different language from your body, you will never be able to communicate. So it takes time to begin that understanding. So many times in this area, we feel ashamed of how we are responding. We might create another barrier to listening to our bodies from that shame. Perhaps we froze when we encountered a noise. And our minds are telling us that the frozen moment is somehow shameful. Perhaps we got angry and we are embarrassed and shamed that we got angry. I don't want us to be ashamed. It is not helpful to this. It's not helpful to us and it's not helpful to our bodies. To quote from Dr. Brene Brown, shame is that warm feeling that washes over us and makes us feel small. It makes us feel flawed and never good enough. Shame loves secrecy. The most dangerous thing to do after feeling shame is to hide or bury our stories. When we bury our story, the shame metastasizes. Dr. Levine approaches this in the same spirit, but maybe with a slightly stronger bent toward the science by saying, when a person is exposed to overwhelming stress, threat, or injury, they develop a procedural memory. And trauma occurs when these implicit procedures are not neutralized. That's that freeze, that fight or flight. And the failure to restore a sense of peace is at the basis for maladaptive, or ways that we're struggling to adapt, and debilitating symptoms of trauma. Those are those behaviors we're no longer able to understand. The communication that's happening from our bodies that we're just not receiving sometimes. I don't know why I got mad. I don't know why I froze. <sighs> really, I think all of this is just another invitation to try and listen to our body and the stories and memories it's attempting to share with us. So, how do we listen to our body better? First, I would draw from the works of both doctors, Brene Brown and Peter Levine, and invite you to consider getting, getting to know yourself the best you can. Know your limits of what it means to start your understanding. Understanding and listening are far too important to treat them with casual dismissal. I would also to encourage you to know you're not alone. You're not meant to be alone. To seek out a community that helps you Find those in professional spaces of healing who will help you. To help you reflect on this, I want to ask you to consider the following short reading from The Gifts of Imperfection by Dr. Brene Brown. Love and belonging are essential to the human experience. As I conducted my interviews, I realized that there was only one thing that separated the research participants who felt a sense of love and belonging from people who seemed to be struggling to find it. The one thing was the belief in their own worthiness. It is as simple and complicated as this. If you, we want to fully experience love and belonging, we must believe we are worthy of love and belonging. When we can let go of what other people think and our own story, we gain access to our worthiness. The feeling we are enough just as we are and that we are worthy of love and belonging. When we spend a lifetime time to distance ourselves from the parts of our lives that don't fit with who we think we are supposed to be, 
we stand outside of our own story and hustle for our worthiness by constantly performing, perfecting, pleasing, and proving our sense of worthiness. That critically important piece that gives us access to love and belonging lives inside our story. The greatest challenge is the believing that we are worthy now, right this minute. Worthiness doesn't have prerequisites. So many of us have knowingly created and unknowingly allowed or been handed down a long list of worthy prerequisites. Some of these include, I will be worthy when I lose 20 pounds. I'll be worthy if I can get pregnant. I'll be worthy if, when I can get or stay sober. I'll be worthy when everyone thinks I am a good parent, and so on and so forth. Here's what is truly at the heart of wholeheartedness. Worthy now. Not if, not when. We are worthy of love and belonging now. Right this minute, as is. In addition to letting go of the ifs and whens, another critical piece of owning our own story and claiming our worthiness is cultivating a better understanding of love and belonging. Oddly enough, we desperately need both, but rarely talk about what they really are or how they work. An invitation to listening to our bodies, a closing. So this is not a self-help only process. One of the things that I shook my head at when I was reading the reviews of all the many different books on somatic healing was the number of people who left poor reviews of the works simply because they could not make the changes or find the magic therapy bullet that could cure them at home, alone and on their own. I found it interesting because all of these works, when I read them actively encourage folks to seek out community and train therapists who help them and guide the healing. The books are literally there and state explicitly that they want you to get started on listening to your body or help you expand your understanding, but that you should never do the work alone. We can only get it started by listening to our bodies better. Acknowledging who we are and wondrous as we are, naming our needs, loving, loving ourselves. So I invite you in closing to listen to your bodies better. Acknowledge that we are wondrous as we are. Please celebrate this sacred gift of life. Try to live into the harmony and its rhythms as Dr. Peter Levine talked about as they are valid and they are part of the human experience. So please, let's just try to do the work of listening to our bodies. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you for considering what I had to say. Amen, ashe, and bishe away.